Hello, and welcome back to the Ninox Learning Channel by Nioxis. In this class, the second class in our 800 series of videos, we're going to continue exploring the amazing capabilities of the new Ninox version 3.3. Today we're going to learn how to build a cascade of selection fields. Now if you'd like to follow along on your own computer, go to www.nioxis.com, log in to your member portal, and in the standard, deluxe, and premier memberships, go to templates, download advanced selection cascade, and you can follow along. The template is not password protected. You can study the code, even copy and paste it right into your own database. Let's go ahead and get started. Now we'll begin by looking at how the cascade actually functions. Imagine that you are working for a large global multinational corporation and you have offices all over the world. There are addresses and locations where we do business on every continent, in every country, state, province, and city. When we are entering a new employee, it would be overwhelming to have a single selection field with all of our offices because there would be thousands of options to choose from. Let's go ahead and create our first employee. I'm gonna create the employee but instead of just going in and selecting from the thousands of work addresses where they may be assigned, I'm going to use this cascade. I'm going to go through these five steps by first selecting a continent and then a country. Once we've selected our country, we can select a state or province, a city, and now we see the address of the office or offices in that city where this employee might work. If we change the city, we see a different selection of addresses. If we change the country, we select a new state or province, a new city, and now a different set of address options. Every step that we took in selecting was dependent on what we selected in the previous step. If I select Europe, I then can choose from European countries. If I select South America, I only see my South American countries. If I select Europe and Italy, I only see Italian cities. Select each step to define the choices that you have in the next step. That is the definition of the cascade. So now that we've seen how it works, let's look at how it's built. Because we can now use these dynamic choice fields all of our selections can be stored in one table. And we, of course, call this the selections table. Now let's take a quick look at our table. It starts with all of the continents, these first seven records. Then we note the countries by continent. Two North American countries, four South American countries, four European. Then, within each country, we define states or provinces and we see those here. And then again, the next level of the cascade, within each state or province, we define the cities, and then finally, the addresses where we do business within this cities. This cascade, where we start from the macro perspective, the largest unit of measure an entire continent, and we become finer and finer in our filtering, as we cascade down to the most granular unit of measure, a specific, single address at a unique location on the globe. This cascade allows us to take thousands of potential options, all of the unique addresses where we do business, and filter them down to a manageable group of selections, which creates a more elegant and intuitive user experience. Now it's very important to note how we created the records in this selection table. We started in step one by creating a record type. Is this a continent option, a country option? Is this going to appear in our selection of states, cities, or addresses? Once we've defined the type of record, then we come down here to actually define the selection itself. But before we get to step two, we define all of the intermediary or intermediate filters. So if I want to create an address which is the 
other address in Columbus, Ohio. First, I would define that this is going to be in North America, then the United States, state of Ohio, and this address also is in the city of Columbus. Now that we have defined the option as we want it to appear in the address pop-up, and we have defined in cascading fashion from macro to micro, all of the filters, and because we are using a dynamic choice field, when we go in and define Ohio and Columbus, we now see both options, a street address in Columbus, Ohio, and the other address in Columbus, Ohio, which you just saw us add. When creating your selections, make sure to define the field where this selection should appear. And here we've defined our five fields. And then make sure to define the filters. Now, in this case, we have four filters, from macro to micro, from biggest to smallest, continent, country, state or province, and finally city. You can have as many filters as you want. If you're filtering vehicles, you can have type of vehicle, manufacturer of vehicle, country of origin, how many axles. You can have different types of vehicles according to body styles. Anything that is filtered or is grouped or categorized will fit very nicely into this cascading selection structure. What we have done is we use the selection capability of the dynamic selection field to define each increasingly restrictive filter. So you'll note here in this dynamic selection field, we define the values as all of the selections, we select all of the selections where the record type is one. That is the only filter. What does that mean? Here are the selection table. Here are all of the selections. Here is the selection type, the record type. And record type 1 is continents. Record types 2, 3, 4, and 5 are all of the different types of selections we might make. But by restricting the optional choices to only those that are record type 1, we restrict the values that we see in this pop-up to only the continents. Again, only record type 1. As we move down the cascade from continent to country to province, city, and specific address, we add more and more filters, which creates a finer and finer, more micro level of restriction. So here we only had one filter. The record type is 1. Here, we're going to have two filters. The record type is two, and the continent is equal to the selection in the previous field. This is the continent field on the employee screen. We are going to look at the numeric key, the code value of our selection, and restrict the selections to only those that are record type two, which I happen to know as countries, and then we're going to further restrict it to only those countries that are of the continent we select. So to see this in action, we can go in and we will select a continent, North America, and then we'll choose a North American country. Change the continent, our selection of countries dynamically changes at runtime. Select Asia, we select from Asian countries. The countries are selection type two. Here's the country selection in the record type field, and we see that that's key number two. And again, the, the backbone of making this work is continuing to add increasingly restrictive levels of filter. At the top, we filtered only by record type. At the next level, we filtered by record type and the name of the continent selected in the previous field. As we move down the cascade, we add more and more restrictions. Here we are restricting by record type, by continent, and by the country selected in the immediately previous field. 
By the time we get down to here, city, we are restricting by continent, country, and the state or province field. And then finally, when we get to level five, the actual employee work address, every one of the previous four fields is now being taken into consideration as a filter. We filter first by record five. Record type five are addresses of our offices. But in addition to filtering by record type, we're also filtering according to the continent we've selected, the country we've selected, the state or province we have selected, and finally the city we have selected. And by using this increasingly restrictive cascade of filters, where each filter is the previous selection field, we can now make it very easy to select the specific record we want out of the potentially thousands or even tens of thousands of records that are a viable choice. If someone works in North America, in Canada, in Toronto, in East York, it's easy to find that address because we filtered out everything else that did not fit into or was not part of the city, province, country, and continent that we previously defined. Now keep in mind, every option in every selection field is stored in the selections table. When we look at the data model for this database, very simple. One stack, one family for the employee records, and one stack for every selection in all five of the selection fields. This means that you also can use the selection table inside of itself. Here in this table, the employees table, we see dynamic choice fields where the choices are coming out of the selections table. But look at this. Here I am inside the selections table. And I have a selection field inside the selections table. And the values that appear, the options that I can choose from in this field in the selections table come from, you guessed it, the very same table, the selections table itself. So now instead of having lots of tables, one for each selection field, we can consolidate or normalize our database. We can have a much more efficient database architecture or data model by putting all of our selections in one table, as we see here, and then use the different filters, starting with the record type and cascading down, becoming more and more restrictive. So if we were to add a new city, it would immediately appear in the city selection in the selection table, even though we're creating the record inside that table. It sounds a little silly. Download the template, open it up in administrative mode. It'll make great sense to you once you look at it. Copy and paste that code right into your database and start using these cascading selection fields to create a more elegant, more streamlined, and a far more friendly user interface and user experience. Join us again in the next class here in the 800 series when we continue to explore Ninox version 3.3. Thanks very much.